Ten. Stand by the text video. Seven. Six. Stand by camera one, mics one and two. Three. Two, one. Take studio. Good morning, MCHS. I'm your host, Christopher McDonald. And I'm Mark Justin. Today we'll be looking back on MCHS's Halloween Week, our school's alumni volleyball tournament, and look at our school during our formal day on November 11th. But first, here's our top story. It takes a lot more work than you think to run a small town. It takes a team of dedicated politicians who care about their community to keep a small, to keep a town like Legal running smoothly. But what goes on during one of these meetings? One of our reporters, Sydney Jones, got a chance to give us an inside look at what goes on during a typical Legal town council meeting. All towns have many decisions to make, whether they be big or small. Legal is no exception to this rule. Legal's town council makes most of the decisions when it comes to Legal's future. Many of these councillors join to make Legal a bigger and better place to live in. This also includes Mayor Carol Tremblay. I actually got into town council because the town was so important to me. I did a lot of volunteering roles prior to being on council. And just having all the opportunity to look at the future of our community and being involved in it was something that appealed to me. Construction projects in Legale are beginning and ending. The construction on Main Street that paved the gutters and sidewalks has ended and a construction crew is now focusing its efforts on a local wastewater line that runs through Legale to the lagoon. The lagoon uh, wastewater line is basically a water line or a sewer line that's being replaced from uh, the lagoon all the way into town. It's uh, 1.8 kilometers and the project uh, costs are estimated about 2.4 million. Uh, we constantly have to watch after aged infrastructure and uh, trying to keep it up to date so that we can continually grow and keep our town prosperous. Infrastructure and business are also two big things that Legale's Town Council are focusing on. Legal also would like an ambulance service, as it was discontinued a few years ago. I asked the councillors what they would like added to the community and why. I'd like to see some new businesses come into town, possibly doctors, uh, possibly pharmacists, but uh, a mix of any kind of development is always good for a town. Some of our priorities for the future would be um, working towards doctor recruitment, um, ambulance services, um, probably just the overall engaging new business into the community and keeping our residents happy. Okay. Legale's councillors would also like to remind everybody, residents and citizens of Legale and surrounding areas, that all meetings are public. First, MCTV News, this is Sydney Jones reporting. Welcome back. With Christmas only 32 days away, MCHS is starting its annual toy drive. Here to talk about the importance of this program for the community is MCHS teacher and MCTV producer Greg Battestein. Thanks for being here today. Pleasure to be here, Chris. Thanks for having me on. How long has the toy drive been going on? Well, I'm not sure about this particular type of toy drive that we're doing now, but MCHS has always had a long history of doing uh, you know, a lot of charity work, especially around Christmas time, whether it's food drives or toy drives. So, this is just kind of piggybacking on a long-standing tradition in the building of, of, of giving to the community. Are there any toys, specific toys you are in need of? Well, we're looking for toys for, for both, you know, for, for guys and gals, and we're looking for all age groups. We're looking for, uh, you know, uh, we're looking for unwrapped, uh, new and inexpensive toys that can be, uh, can be donated. Uh, we're also looking for maybe potentially some cast donations as well. We're looking at some teenagers that don't want toys or maybe wanting gift cards or whatever, maybe Best Buy or whatever. Uh, so we're looking for cash donations as well, and it can be as little as $5. It can be a dollar. If you only have a dollar to, to offer, then uh, you know, bring in a dollar. But, I mean, every little bit helps, and we're trying to get as many, uh, uh, many gifts for you know, people in the community that are, that are uh, maybe a little short of cash this time of year or you know, short in cash in general. Uh, we're trying to get those kids, uh, a merry, we're trying to give them a Merry Christmas as well. Are, yeah, would you accept gently used toys? Well, we're preferring that they're, they're used, that they're not used toys. We're preferring that they're, they're actually new toys. Uh, they don't have to be very expensive, but here's what happens. If you bring your toys then, and they're, and they're going to be collecting these toys in, in donations and student services. If you bring these toys and donations down to student services, they're, they're, they're actually doing kind of a contest where you will get a bingo card with every $5 that you donate. 
and those bingo cards will then kind of key up to a bingo board that's going to be going up in center court and you'll be able to potentially win some big prizes uh, based on the donations. So not only are we, are we looking to have the donations, but we're, we're trying to make it fun for people as well. Like, you know, we're feeling good about giving to the community, but at the same time, there's a little bit of fun because you get a, you know, a little bit of a reward back for what you're doing. And, uh, you know, hopefully you can win some prizes that way as well. Is there any specific minimum or maximum value? Uh, really, no. I mean, if you can afford a dollar, if you can, you know, I mean, bring in what you can. Um, you know, I mean, the toy doesn't have to be a $100 toy. I mean, if you want to bring a $100 toy in, that's fine. But, uh, you know, I, I always say that if you can, if you can buy, if you're going to spend $100, you might as well spend, you know, buy five $20 toys or, you know, seven $15 toys. But uh, there is no maximum value. Uh, and like I said, for every $5 you donate, you will get a bingo card. So if you were to donate $100, for example, that would give you 20 bingo cards to play with. Uh, during the bingo uh, game that's going to be going on between now and the toy drive goes from now until December the 15th that the, the cutoff is the 15th of December uh, for all these toys Where can students drop off any donations? Well again anytime between now and December the 15th students can uh, can can go to uh, uh, Student services that's where they're you know asking to drop off the donations if you have any questions you can talk to organizer uh, Mrs. Uh, Lori McCurdy or uh, Mrs. Uh, Sandy Blackburn and student services about the about the uh, the drive in general. If you have any further questions, you can talk to those ladies there. Okay. Thanks for having us. Well, yeah, thanks, thanks for being yeah, here. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks, Chris. Okay. Thanks a lot. Coming up after the commercial break, MCTV meteorologist Ben Fingler will have a look at the weather for Canada and Alberta, as well as Mournville's seven day forecast. Make sure you sign up for your positions, all right? All right, guys, this is serious. I don't have any hosts for the next show. I need some hosts, please. Are you kidding me? Well, I might as well go and do the titles then. The studio. You get in the studio. MCTV News. I host so my students don't have to. Do you need anything else? OMG. Harry Styles and Ariana Grande? Perfect. Hey, director, what camera are we taking? Camera? Mine, of course. Hashtag selfie. Is the lighting okay, Mr. B? From this angle? Perfect. Did I spell the host's name right? Oh my god, guys, I can't even. Are you feeling alright? Oh my god, look at this juicy text Christine texted me. Hey, Mr. B, here's a snack from the snack shack. Why's that? You get a little valley girl when you're hungry. Better? Better. Stand by camera two, mics two and three. Bonjour. Bienvenue à MCTV. Je suis Kent Lassard. You're not you when you're hungry. Snack Shack satisfies. Thanks, guys. Let's take a look at our weather across Canada. In Whitehorse, it's negative 15, sun and cloud. Yellowknife, negative 5, and snowing. Vancouver, of course it's raining at 9 degrees. Gina is 1 degrees and snowing along with Winnipeg at the same. Toronto is a sun and cloud mix at 2. We're going to look over here on our east coast. We've got Calumet at negative 13, mix of sun and clouds, snowing. St. John's, 8, raining. Halifax is 4 and snowing. Montreal is a mix of sun and cloud at 1. Let's take a look at Alberta's forecast. High level. Up north, snowing across the whole province except for Madison Hat. Up north, negative 7, snowing. Fort Mac is negative 1 degrees. Edmonton is negative 2. 
Red Deer is negative three, getting kind of chilly out in Alberta. Grand Prairie snowing at negative four. Jasper is one. Banff is one. Calgary, it's snowing at, at three with a mix of sun and cloud. Medicine Hat, the only place that's not snowing in Alberta. Six, mix of sun and cloud and it's raining. Let's have a look at our current conditions. It's negative three degrees Celsius. Wind is going south at 15 kilometers an hour. The relative humidity is 75%. Sunrise was at 8.18 this morning. Sunset was at 4.24 tonight. Let's take a look at our seven day forecast. Thursday, it's, so it looks fairly sunny this week. Thursday is gonna be high of one, low of negative eight. Friday, mix of sun and cloud, negative one, low of negative nine. Saturday is a mix of sun and cloud and snowing. Negative four as a high, negative eight as a low. Sunday, getting pretty cloudy by that time. Negative five as a high, negative nine as a low. Monday is same, negative five as a high, negative eight as a low, along with Tuesday. Wednesday is negative four as a high, negative five as a low. Uh, thank you, back to you in studio. Every year, MCHS puts on Halloween Week during the week that leads up to Halloween. They put on activities to get, to get students in the Halloween spirit. Activities this year include games like Spider on the Wall, Donut on a String, and a pie eating contest that all lead up to MCHS's ha Halloween Day on Monday. Our reporter, William Doney, explains. Halloween Week is one of the many activities that happen in the school year round. We asked students if they enjoyed it and why. Yeah, I do because there's a lot. Yes, I enjoy Halloween Week because there's lots of fun activities for the students to take place in during lunch and lots of fun things to do where you can win prizes. I think it's a uh, very good idea for the school community. Um, it really tends to benefit the school's environment because people are always a lot more involved and really wishing to go out and participate in all the school's events. I think Halloween is really fun because um, all of the different activities you can watch and enjoy. Many students took part in the events that happened during Halloween. We asked students which events they participated in and which ones they did well in. Um, I participated in the mummy wrap, and that I did not win, but I feel as though I was a pretty, pretty good looking mummy, you know. Um, I also participated in the pumpkin pie eating contest, and I came second behind Sydney Jones in that. I participated in the pie eating contest, and I came in third. We asked students if they thought that the school should continue with the tradition of Halloween or if they should end it. I think the school should continue Halloween because it's a fun thing to do during lunch if you're bored. They should try uh, making some more cooler and fun events as well. Like the events that they already have are pretty good, but um, you know if they could find more ways to get kids involved and that would really help benefit the school community and I think they should keep it going. In the aftermath of Halloween, many students are hoping to see the activities and the games come back again next year. For MCTV News, William Doney reporting. Welcome back. I'm William Doney, and here's what's happening in the world of sports. There were four games on tap in the NHL as Ottawa faced Montreal and took the win 4-3 with Mike Hoffman and Mark Stone. Both had three-point nights with a goal and two assists each. Carolina beat the Toronto Maple Leafs 2-1 as Stahlberg netted the winner in the second period. And Seattle faced Boston and took the win 4-2 with Jory Latira scoring two goals. And Philly beat Florida with Wayne Simmons scoring one goal and one assist. And the Las Vegas Golden Knights will be the new name of the team for Vegas as the logo and name were both recently revealed. Last night in the NBA, there were four games on tap with the New Orleans Pelicans coming off a losing streak to beat the Atlanta Hawks 112-94 to and Tim Frazier's 21 points and 14 assists. The Trailblazers fell to the Knicks as Kristaps Porzingis had 31 points and 9 rebounds, and the Chicago Bulls lost to the Nuggets 110-107 to as the rookie, Jamal Murray, had a career high of 24 points. Finally, the Oklahoma City Thunder lost to the Los Angeles Lakers 111-109 to as the Thunder had a 14-0 scoring streak but could not grab the win. Tomorrow night in the NFL, Minnesota is versing Detroit as they battle for first place in the North. And Washington is taking on Dallas in hopes that the Cowboys can win their 10th straight game against the Redskins. And finally, Pittsburgh is going against Indiana as both teams try to improve their 5-5 five five records. 
This weekend in the CFL, Edmonton fell to Ottawa 35-23 as running back Kian LaFrance rushed for 157 yards, had 25 carries and one touchdown to help Ottawa win the Eastern Final. And Calgary took on BC as Bo Levi Mitchell went 21 for 28. In the one, to advance the Stamps to the 104th Grey Cup. The annual MCHS Alumni Volleyball Tournament is a fun yet competitive volleyball game that pits old MCHS graduates against this year's students, as Amber St. Dennis brings us this report. The annual Alumni Tournament is a volleyball gathering that comes around every year in October. Past schools from previous years and present players join together to compete for ultimate bragging rights on who is the best team. I asked some why they have such a deep passion for the sport and what they like about the tournament. It's a good experience. Teachers are always fun. It's the best when you get to play the teachers in the game. I really like the intensity of it. The energy it brings in the sport, just every time you get a big hit, a nice ball up, you know, the energy, the hype. Just how everybody's so crazy on the court and having fun. Trevor Bodner, some I know, used to coach the senior boys volleyball team back in 2014. As some returning players were here for the tournament, I asked him what it was like to see all the boys he used to coach and how it felt to beat the senior boys. It's great. You see them grow up, become adults and young men and stuff, and it's a lot of fun playing against them, and we always have a real fun time here. People underestimate the teachers. They think we're old. We're the underdog, and they didn't see us coming. It happens every year. Although volleyball is a fun sport, it puts a lot of tension and pressure on you and your team, also challenging you to step up your game. Even so, there are some rewards to being on a team and facing the challenges. It was actually really hard because they were older teams and we were just a small little grade 10s and 11s playing against older and obviously more um, advanced teams. It's just challenging having the hand-eye to go up in midair and hit a ball. We won zones as the JV team, so that was a really high moment. The alumni tournament is a fun way for athletes of all ranks and ages to come together and compete in a less demanding environment. All the teams played to their best ability and made it a great experience for everyone. From CTV News, this is Amber St. Dennis reporting. Let's take a look at what's going on at MCHS this week. MCHS Drama presents Emma, a pop musical, on Wednesday, November 30th to Friday, December 2nd. Tickets are on sale at the MCHS main office or Mournville Zobies for $10 or online at www.eventbrite.com for $12. Glitter Club meeting tomorrow in room 108. Everyone is welcome to join. This Thursday is once again parent-teacher interviews. They will take place at after school at 5 o'clock and will end at 8. It's that time of year again. The MCHS toy drive starts off this week and continues until December 15th. Bring a new unwrapped toy or a $5 donation to Student Services to get a bingo card. Numbers will be drawn every day and prizes will be awarded. Need to get, need to get your MCTV news fix? If so, head online to www.bowdestein.net. Our digital archive is expanding and will soon include all episodes aired during our last 23 seasons. For all these and other school information, keep connected by listening to the daily announcements in Block 3, logging on to the school's website at www.mchs.gsacred.ab.ca, following the school on Twitter at MCHS Wolves, or searching the hashtag MCTV News. Formal Day is a biannual tra tradition here at MCHS. On November 11th, students and staff dressed in their best to honor our fallen soldiers. Brad Bullock gives us a little look at this tradition here at MCHS. MCHS held its annual formal day on November the 11th. Many students dressed in their best attire to show respect for our Canadian troops. Students Chris Ogie and Kendra Rivard told us why formal day is important to MCHS and why you should dress up. I think it's important because we have to show appreciation for all the people that died for us. Yeah. It shows your respect for coming in for Remembrance Day and it just shows that you're interested in looking nice. Formal Day is about showing thanks and giving respect to our troops. And Jenna McKinney put that into perspective for us. A formal Day shows the school coming together to support and respect our Canadian troops and the military. Roy Olosky and Alicia DeBerardino are very thankful for our Canadian troops that made the ultimate sacrifice and they are very glad that we can live in a peaceful world today. Well because they did give the ultimate sacrifice for everybody, right? And if it weren't for them, we'd still be, you know, there would still be a lot more fighting around the world, and yeah. Without those troops who fought for us, there's a good chance we wouldn't have the freedom that we do today. Roy and Chris both enjoy the school's idea of having a formal day and enjoy dressing up. It gives the kids a chance to dress up, 
in whatever, you know, if they want to do, you know, a full suit or just a shirt, tie, and pant, dress pants. And it's actually kind of fun. I find it really fun. Honestly, I wish you could dress up like this every day. I think it's really nice. Jenna McKinney thinks that MCHS's formal day is a cool and unique idea to give thanks. I think it is a little bit of a unique way because you see lots of students coming out of their regular attire and showing that they are actually putting some effort into respect Remembrance Day. Chris Ogie is very grateful for all the men and women that served. And he thinks that Remembrance Day and other events like Formal Day are very important to show you're thankful. I think everybody takes their freedom from granted, really. Nobody really knows what they do out there. They just just bypass it. They just hear it on the news sometimes. No one really like, cares about it. That's why I think Formal Day and the Day is a good thing because it lets us respect all the people that fought for us. Formal Day was a success yet again, and we'll be looking forward to the next one here at MCHS. For MCTV News, this is Bradford Bullock reporting. That's our show for today. Thanks for tuning in. Join us again next week with hosts Skylar Lomala and Sarah Mendiak as they bring you a look at the Morinville Remembrance Day, a day in the life of a clumsy person, awards night, and a piece called Fact or Fiction. All this plus sports and your Morinville seven-day weather forecast on our next episode, one week from the day, Wednesday, November 30th. So, Chris, you excited for Rogue One? It's less than one month now. Hyped as ever. Yeah, what, what do you think is going to be the best part, or what are you most excited for? Darth Vader, for sure. Yeah, me too. And, and honestly, I think we all are. It's good yeah. to see him back in the saddle for the Sith. Yeah. Well, I guess that's it for today. From all of us at MCTV News, I'm Christopher McDonald. And I'm Mark Justin. Have a great afternoon, MCHS.